Hey what's up everybody, TrophyNet here and welcome back to Gwent Edge. In this show we talk about specific Gwent cards or interesting decks to play around with. Today we're back with the Squiatel in a variant on the Elven archetype. In the Claptrap deck, we combine the tenacity of the Elves with the ambush tactics of traps to flood the field with our pointy-eared forces while still maintaining some removal options. Let's not waste too much time and head straight in. Our leader ability for today is pretty obvious in this case. We're going for Deadeye Ambush, which allows us to transform a trigger trap into a tree-powered elven Deadeye, four separate times. This not only constitutes 12 extra points if you pull it off, it also adds four more elves to the field and they can help with some of our other cards. Since our main goal is to fill the field with as many elves as possible, we also equip the new and shade Saber Stratagem card, which replaces the default one and allows us to spawn and play a Squiretail Neophyte, adding two more elves instantly. The Stratagems are a cool new addition from the Merchants of Ophir expansion, which allow you to customize your beginner's advantage and replace the standard 5 point boost for something more suited to your playstyle. Let's talk about traps first. Sadly, not a lot of new traps have been added since the last time we did an Eldane deck, which is already a year ago, but the effects of the traps have been changed somewhat. The incinerating trap still does 5 damage to the next enemy unit played, or 3 damage to an enemy unit of your choice if you trigger the trap yourself. Crushing traps are still amazing, dealing 2 damage to each enemy unit on the row with the most units, triggered after 2 of your turns. This means that crushing traps should ideally be played by the end of a round when you still have around 2 or 3 cards left. If you play them at 3 cards left, you can also transform them into an elven deadeye during your final turn. If necessary, you can also trigger the crushing trap manually, in which case you can select a row, but it only does 1 damage to each enemy unit on that row, so better not to do that. The Mahakam Horn is still perfect to catch your opponent unaware, boosting adjacent units by 4 when your opponent passes. Some players still miscalculate and pass prematurely, thinking they have a lead, only for the Horn to trigger and give you enough points to take the round without any extra cards. Then we have the Adjusted Traps, the Serpent Trap and the Pitfall Trap. The Serpent Trap triggers when your opponent plays a special card and destroys the highest enemy unit in the process. It doesn't counter the special card anymore, but can be pretty devastating in certain situations, especially against monsters. The drawback is that you can't control whether your opponent will even play another special card, so this card sometimes never triggers, leaving you empty-handed. The Pitfall Trap, on the other hand, is still very good. It doesn't destroy the next enemy unit played anymore, but triggers on the next card your opponent plays, regardless of type, and deals damage equal to the provision cost of the card played, and spreads out that damage randomly across all enemy units. This even works on the new scenario cards, causing the trap to deal up to 14 damage in one go, pretty much clearing the enemy field in most cases, and perfect against those pesky triple siege decks. The perfect complement to all of these traps is your vet who allows you to pull a trigger trap from the field back to your hand and play another one. Ideally, you should use him on the crushing or the pitfall trap, since you basically can use those twice now. Which seamlessly brings us to another aspect of this deck. Elves. If you're not playing traps, you should focus on getting as many elves on the field as possible. And finish off with either Yaivin, Isengrim or Venosiel, racking up a nice amount of points or damage. To do this, we have a few options. The Squiretail Neophyte and the Half-Elf Hunter both play two elves at once, which also includes our stratagem, with the Hunter spawning an extra Deadeye. Ellerin is pulled from the deck automatically if you have five or more elves on the field, adding five more points and an extra elf instantly. And then we have Feign Death, Squiretail's scenario card, which can snowball into adding up to four more elven Deadeyes if it stays on the field. It spawns one Deadeye when played, two more when you play your first elf, and then another if you manage to kill an enemy with the 3 damage from the Waylay card it spawns when you play your second elf. And Waylay is also in this deck separately. The Deadeye synchronize perfectly with Vernosiel, who is very versatile. If you have 4 or more Deadeyes, you should probably play her on the melee row, since she'll do 2 damage to a random enemy for each Deadeye you have, wrecking the enemy field in the process. If you don't have the Deadeyes, or you don't have a lot of opponents left, she can still be very useful. Play her on the ranged row and she'll spawn another two Deadeyes, making her the only card to give you three elves in one go. But what to do with all these elves? Yaivin allows you to deal damage equal to the amount of allied elves to a single enemy unit, 
and you can easily get 6 or more damage out of this since you have so many elves on the field allowing you to take out buffed units with ease. The other big finisher is Isengrim. Isengrim boosts all allied elves on the field by 1 on top of his 6 base power. If he's on the field, he boosts himself by 1 every time you play an elf as well. It's very doable with this deck and the leader ability to fill the field completely with mostly elves, boosting Isengrim's point gain up to a maximum of 22 points if you have the ideal setup. The final cards I want to talk about really quickly are Etriel and Murlega. Both do 3 damage by default but have an extra effect if the other one is already on the field. Etriel does 7 damage instead of 3 if Murlega is already on the field and Murlega does 3 damage to the enemies adjacent to your target on top of the base 3 damage bringing this feline's points total to 13. They're a really cool combo if you can keep them alive. The general game flow for this deck is to start slow and end with either Yivin, a crushing trap or both. The Elven Swordmaster is a good starter, either drawing some damage or allowing you to deal a bit of damage each turn while you set up your traps. Mahakam Horn is also perfect in the first round to get some free card advantage if your opponent forgets about it. I also usually use Yorvet in the first round to be able to replay the Pitfall or Crushing Trap later. If needed, you can definitely use your leader ability in the first round as well. Since you should only play a few traps in the last round and you only have 7 traps in total and you usually can't transform the Markham Horn, you should take advantage of your ability at every point you can. You basically want to hide your potential point total with the traps, making it harder for your opponent to estimate how far they need to go. The downside to this is that you should avoid playing traps that trigger after your opponent plays a card later in the round especially if they can still pass. This could result in you losing out on a lot of potential points and could force you to play the last round with less cards. The final round is the one where you should really focus on filling the field with elves and capitalizing on all of them. Play Feign Death when you have around 5 cards left and keep your Crushing Trap for when you have 3 cards left to really maximize the damage output but still be able to transform it into a Deadeye. Your final card should ideally be either Vignosiel or Isengrim or both of course, since they can both flip the match in your favor if your setup was successful. An entire group of elves overcoming your opponent. And that's it for today, what do you think about the Claptrap deck? Got any other ideas on how to improve it or any new ways to outthink your opponent? Don't hesitate to leave advice in the comment section down below so we can help each other out. That's what we're here for after all. Any feedback is greatly appreciated. Check me out on Twitter at @trophynuts. that's T-R-O-V-N-U-T, if you want to talk. And if you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like? Any support is really appreciated. Thanks enormously for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Gwent Edge. Goodbye!